angle grinders are a highly useful tool, frequently employed by both the home user and the professional craftsman. However, as with any power tool, proper and safe usage is required. Following good safety practices when using a grinder is a must. Make a habit of including safety in all your activities. Hi, I'm Ryan. And I'm Curtis. The Power Tool Institute is committed to promoting the safe and proper operation of power tools. PTI has produced a series of presentations on the safe operation of electric power tools. We're here today to talk about the proper use of angle grinders and how to best employ them to help protect you and those around you. It is the PTI member company's commitment to the safe operation of grinders which prompted the production of this safety video. There are also nationally recognized ULNC safety standards dictating the proper, safe design and manufacture of electric power tools. When you purchase an angle grinder, look for a listing mark from a nationally recognized testing laboratory indicating your grinder meets these standards. And remember that every angle grinder comes with an important instruction manual. Be sure to thoroughly read and understand the manual before you begin using the tool. There will be additional information in the manual to supplement what we talk about today. Also read and understand the warnings on the product. We're with you today to demonstrate and instruct users in the best methods for using angle grinders and to teach proper safety precautions that should always be foremost in operators' minds. This applies to angle grinders, not other types such as straight grinders. Note that we're going to use the term grinder in this video. We're talking about angle grinders, even though the tool can be used for a task other than grinding. That's right, Curtis. Angle grinders are handheld power tools used for grinding, sanding, wire brushing, and abrasive cutting, which is a cutting off operation. The grinders we'll be demonstrating today are both electric and battery powered. All are designed with the spindle at a right angle to the motor body, which is why they're known as angle grinders, sometimes also referred to as side grinders. The most common grinders available for general purchase are classified as either large or small angle grinders, typically grouped by their wheel diameter. Large angle grinders have an abrasive wheel capacity of 7 to 9 inches in diameter. The maximum spindle speed of the tool is referred to as a rated speed which is displayed on the nameplate in rotations per minute or RPM. The speed for these large grinders must be below 8,550 RPM for 7-inch grinders and below 6,650 RPM for 9-inch grinders. Small and medium angle grinders have a smaller diameter wheel capacity and higher speed. They range in wheel capacity from 4 to 6 inches in diameter and have rated no load speeds below 12,000 RPM for 5-inch wheel capacity grinders and below 10,000 RPM for 6-inch wheel capacity grinders. Here are some small angle grinder styles popular in the market today. Small and medium angle grinders have either a rat tail grip similar to a large angle grinder or a barrel or body grip. The rat tail designs have a trigger switch built into the rat tail handle. The barrel body grip designs are typically provided with a slide switch on the side or on the top of the barrel or a paddle switch on the bottom of the barrel. All grinders with 4 inch or larger wheel capacity are provided with a side handle that can be mounted on either the right or left side of the tool, depending on the user's preference or application. You must mount an accessory onto the grinder to perform work. Accessories can be abrasive wheels, diamond wheels, wire brushes, wire wheels, or sanding products. When using abrasive wheels, angle grinders are generally designed to use the press center wheels. Grinding wheels come in a great variety of shapes and sizes. In most cases, the wheels are referred to by a specific type designation due in a large part to ongoing work toward harmonization of standards around the world, wheels may be referred to by their U.S. or European numbering designation. 
We'll be referring to them by their U.S. numerical type designation as they are most well known in North America. The most common are Type 27 grinding wheels, which are wheels that are straight outside the center depressed zone, and Type 28 grinding wheels, which are saucer shaped outside of the center depressed area. These grinding wheels were designed to remove the material with the bottom face and occasionally with the perimeter of the wheel. A Type 27A cutoff wheel, which is a wheel that is straight outside the center depressed zone, is designed to work only with the edge of the wheel. The top or bottom face of the Type 27A cutoff wheel must never be used for grinding. Note that cutoff wheels, which perform a special type of grinding operation using the edge of a thin wheel, are also available as a Type 1 cutting wheel, which is a straight wheel. There are also tapered cup wheels for surface grinding called Type 11. You should always consult the tool manufacturer's instructions to verify what types of accessories your grinder was designed for since appropriate guards and wheel mounting hardware must be used. Speaking of instructions, there are different ways to mount wheels onto a grinder. Because of the variety of methods, always follow the manufacturer's instructions for mounting the wheels. Wheels that do not fit your grinder, do not match the mounting hardware properly, or which are installed using incorrect hardware will run out of balance or vibrate excessively and may cause loss of control or failure of the wheel. As you have seen, some of the wheels are manufactured with mounting hardware already affixed. This threaded hardware or hub mount allows the wheel to be simply spun on the grinder spindle. Thus, they are referred to as spin-on wheels. Always make sure the threads of the wheel hub match the grinder spindle thread and that the wheel is tightened snugly onto the spindle. The mounting hardware is not reusable and must be discarded with the used wheel. Other wheels are designed with a plain mounting hole. These wheels must be clamped to the grinder spindle by specially designed discs called flanges that come with the grinder. A flange set consists of a backing flange, also known as an inner flange, which is positioned on the spindle behind the wheel and a locking flange, also known as an outer flange, which is mounted over the front side of the wheel. Typically, the outer flange is threaded to fit the spindle threads. For the small angle grinders, the backing and the locking flanges are typically the same diameter. The side of the flange that is recessed must always face the surface of the wheel. The large angle grinders may have a specially designed backing flange called an adapter flange that extends past the raised center portion of the wheel. Always use undamaged wheel flanges that are the correct size and shape for your selected wheel. Proper wheel flanges support the wheel, thus reducing the possibility of wheel breakage. Flanges for cutoff wheels may be different from depressed center grinding wheel flanges. You must mount the wheel only with the flanges designed for the particular wheel type. For example, never mount a flat cutoff wheel with an adapter flange for depressed center wheels. The locking flange will press the center of the wheel into unsupported space behind the wheel center and crack the wheel. Do not use any backing flange for mounting a depressed center Type 27 or 28 hubbed wheel. On the other hand, the spin-on Type 11 cup wheels require a backing flange. However, the flat, non-recessed side of the flange must face the wheel surface. Make sure when installing the wheel to tighten the wheel snugly, but without over-tightening. As you can see, the wheel mounting hole size must match the flange's wheel mounting collar diameter, and the flange must properly fit the spindle of the grinder. All mounting hardware, whether flange mounts or spin-on hubs, play an important role in ensuring the safe mounting of wheels. Failure to follow the manufacturer's mounting instructions can have serious safety implications. There are appropriate guarding systems for every use. The most essential device for safe operation is an appropriate, properly positioned wheel guard. Whenever setting up the tool with an accessory, it is important to select the right guard. Grinding wheels use grinding guards. Typically, the standard guard supplied with grinders is for Type 27 grinding wheels. Guards for cutoff wheels and guards for cup wheel applications may be available as accessories. Note that for some sanding and wire brushing applications, the guard may need to be removed. Always check the operator's instruction manual. Once properly selected, the guard must be securely attached to the power tool and positioned for maximum safety, so the least amount of wheel is exposed toward the operator. When attaching the side handle to either the right or left side, 
make it your practice to bias the guard to the same side as the side handle. The guard helps to protect the operator from broken wheel fragments and accidental contact with the wheel. Another important consideration for selecting a center to press wheel grinding guard is ensuring that the wheel is positioned inside the guard's lip. To best protect the operator, the outer lip of the grinding guard should curl toward the wheel to better retain sparks, hot metal particles, and possible broken wheel fragments. And if you cannot mount the wheel so it is positioned inside the lip of the guard, do not use the wheel guard combination. Ask the manufacturer for the appropriate accessory. As with all power tools, safety when using grinders is a must. Failure to follow all instructions in the manual and on product warnings may result in electric shock, fire, and or serious injury. We're going to mention some of the typical safety instructions. One thing you'll need is a safe work area. Keep your work area clean and well lit. Cluttered or dark areas invite accidents. Do not operate power tools in explosive atmospheres near flammable liquids, gases, or dust. Power tools create sparks, which may ignite the dust or fumes. Keep bystanders, children, and visitors away when using a power tool. Always keep non-operators a safe distance away from any work area. Distractions can cause you to lose control. Anyone entering the work area must wear personal protective equipment. Depending on the application, use a face shield, safety goggles, or safety glasses. As appropriate, wear a dust mask, hearing protection, gloves, and a workshop apron capable of stopping small abrasive or workpiece fragments. Fragments of a workpiece or a broken accessory may fly away and cause injury to anyone beyond the immediate area of operation. There are several specific things to remember about accessories. First, do not use accessories that are not specifically designed for the tool and recommended by the manufacturer. Just because the accessory can be attached to your power tool does not assure its safe operation. Next, accessories must be used only for recommended applications. For example, do not grind with the side of a cutoff wheel. Abrasive cutoff wheels are intended for peripheral grinding, so side forces applied to these wheels may cause them to shatter. Grinding wheels, on the other hand, should be positioned at an angle to the work surface in accordance with the instruction manual, typically around 15 degrees. Do not hold the grinder flat against the work surface when you are grinding. The rated speed of the accessory must be at least equal to the maximum speed marked on the power tool. Accessories running faster than their rated speed can break and fly apart. Just because the diameter of the wheel matches the diameter rating on your grinder does not mean it can be safely mounted. For example, a 5-inch cup wheel with a speed rating of 7200 RPM cannot be safely mounted on a 5-inch grinder that has a speed rating of 11,000 RPM. Also, do not use worn down wheels from larger power tools. The wheel is not rated for the higher speed of the smaller grinder. A wheel intended for a larger power tool is not suitable for the higher speed of a smaller tool and may burst. Also, the outside diameter and the thickness of your accessory must be within the capacity rating of your power tool. Incorrectly sized accessories cannot be adequately guarded or controlled. Always check your grinder carefully before beginning your work. If it is damaged or needs maintenance, do not use the tool until the maintenance is performed by a qualified person. Likewise, never use a damaged accessory. Before each use, inspect the accessory. For example, abrasive wheels for chips and cracks, the backing pad for cracks, tears, or excess wear, and the wire brush for loose or cracked wires. If the power tool or accessory is dropped, either inspect it for damage or install an undamaged accessory. After inspecting and installing an accessory, position yourself and bystanders away from the plane of the rotating accessory and run the power tool at maximum no load speed for one minute. Damaged accessories will normally break apart during this test time. Always hold the power tool by its insulated gripping surface. An accessory contacting a live wire or the power tool's own cord may make exposed metal parts of the power tool live and shock the operator. Always position the cord clear of the spinning accessory. If you lose control, the cord may be cut or snagged and your hand or arm may be pulled into the spinning accessory. Never lay a power tool down until the accessory has come to a complete stop. 
you should not carry your grinder with your finger on the switch. Do not start or run the power tool while carrying it at your side. Accidental contact with the spinning accessory could snag your clothing, pulling the accessory into your body. Another important detail to remember is to regularly clean the power tool's air vents. The motor's fan will draw the dust inside the housing, and excessive accumulation of powdered metal may cause electrical hazards. Do not use accessories that require liquid coolants. Using water or other liquid coolants may result in electrocution or shock to the operator. Another important safety topic is kickback, which is a serious hazard associated with grinders. Kickback is a sudden reaction to a pinched or snagged rotating wheel, backing pad, brush, or any other accessory. Pinching or snagging causes rapid stalling of the rotating accessory, which in turn causes an uncontrolled power tool to be forced in the direction opposite the accessory's rotation at the point of the binding. Kickback most frequently occurs when using cutoff wheels but can also occur when grinding near corners or edges. You should know that kickback may happen when using any accessory on a grinder, so you must always be prepared. For example, if an abrasive wheel is snagged or pinched by the workpiece, the edge of the wheel that is entering into the pinch point can dig into the surface of the material, causing the wheel to climb out or kick out. The wheel may either jump toward or away from the operator, depending on the direction of the wheel's movement at the point of pinching. Abrasive wheels may also break under these conditions. To minimize the chance of kickback, always take the following precautions. Number one, maintain a firm grip on the power tool and position your body and arm to allow you to resist kickback forces. Kickback will propel the tool in a direction opposite to the wheel's movement at the point of snagging. Always use a side handle for maximum control over kickback or torque reaction during startup. An operator can control torque reactions or kickback forces if proper precautions are taken. Number two, use special care when working corners, sharp edges, etc. Corners and sharp edges have a tendency to snag the rotating accessory and cause loss of control or kickback. Avoid bouncing, which can also snag the accessory. Number three, do not attach a saw chain or wood carving or tooth saw blade. Such blades frequently create kickback and loss of control. Number four, never place your hand near the rotating accessory. The accessory may kick back over your hand. Angle grinders are versatile tools with many applications. One common use is in abrasive cutoff operations. When using an angle grinder in this capacity, always follow these safety cautions. Support panels or any oversized workpiece to minimize the risk of wheel pinching and kickback. Large workpieces tend to sag under their own weight. Supports must be placed under the workpiece near the line of the cut and near the edge of the workpiece on both sides of the wheel. Use extra caution when making a pocket cut into existing walls or other blind areas. The protruding wheel may cut gas or water pipes or electrical wiring or objects that can cause kickback. Do not jam the cutoff wheel or apply excessive pressure. Do not attempt to make a cut of excessive depth. Overstressing the wheel increases the loading and thus the susceptibility to twisting or binding of the wheel in the cut. This also increases the possibility of kickback or wheel breakage. Do not position your body in line with and behind the rotating wheel. When the wheel at the point of operation is moving away from your body, the possible kickback may propel the spinning wheel and the power tool directly at you. When the wheel is binding or when you are interrupting a cut for any reason, switch off the power tool and hold the power tool motionless until the wheel comes to a complete stop. Never attempt to remove the cutoff wheel from the cut while the wheel is in motion, otherwise kickback may occur. Investigate and take corrective action to eliminate the cause of wheel binding. Do not restart the cutting operation in the workpiece. Let the wheel reach full speed and carefully re-enter the cut. The wheel may bind, walk up, or kick back if the power tool is restarted in the workpiece. Another application for angle grinders is sanding. With the proper backing pad, some angle grinders may be used for sanding and brushing applications. Always check with the manufacturer and follow their recommendation for proper configuration and accessories. 
Do not use excessively oversized sanding disc paper. Follow manufacturer's recommendations when selecting sanding paper. Sanding paper extending beyond the sanding pad represents a laceration hazard and may cause snagging, tearing of the paper, or kickback. When performing wire brushing applications, be aware that wire bristles are thrown by the brush even during ordinary operation. Do not overstress the wires by applying excessive load to the brush. The wire bristles can easily penetrate light clothing and or skin. If the use of a guard is recommended for wire brushing, do not allow any interference of the wire wheel or brush with the guard. The wire wheel or brush may expand in diameter due to workload and centrifugal forces. Again, always verify and follow the manufacturer's recommendations. Always remember to follow these safety guidelines when working with an angle grinder. When used properly, your angle grinder can provide you with many years of safe operation and successful use. PTI and its members are committed to your safety, but in the final analysis, your health and safety are up to you. Additional safety videos and literature are available from the PowerTool Institute at PowerToolInstitute.com.